three here on CBS Sports is in Lexington, Kentucky, as the Fighting Tigers of LSU prepare to take on the Wildcats here in the Commonwealth. And if you look at the standings, LSU with a victory today would wrap up the regular season crown in the Southeastern Conference. Kentucky in a battle royale to win the East. Four teams vying for the top spot. South Carolina in first after their big win against Kentucky the other night. And let's take a look at the lineup. The starting fives for both clubs, the veterans of Final Four experience. Mitchell and Temple for LSU leading the way. Thornton, the outstanding scorer. Spencer, the point. Chris Johnson battling bronchitis. Porter meets Harris, Patterson, and Stevenson, the starting five. And today's game is brought to you on HDTV by Harris Corporation, the worldwide leader in broadcast systems for high-definition television and mobile media. Tim Brando alongside Mike Jeminski. Happy to have you with us for game three of our Troika on CBS Sports today. And a great matchup to keep your eye on, Tim Early. Garrett Temple, one of the best defenders, if not the best defender in the country against Jody Meeks, one of the best scorers in the country. Yeah, you'll recall he got his reputation on that three of 18 shooting day he gave J.J. Reddick in the regional finals in Atlanta back in 2006 when the Tigers made the final four. There's the pass from Harris to Perry Stevenson for the quick flush, and it's 2-0 Kentucky. This has been a, a little bit of a mentally fragile team in Kentucky, and I think a quick start and a confident start is going to be a big key for them. Bo Spencer, who has been in uh, less than a year's time for Trent Johnson, the straw that stirs the drink for this club, an outstanding point guard operating for LSU. There's the dump down to Johnson. He has been very ill, got an IV before the game, and there's a foul. Patterson gets him with the body and he'll have to remain eligible today because this is a Kentucky team that thrives on the scoring of both Patterson and Jody Meeks. And that's an interesting play. Johnson uh, coming off a five-point performance, a four-point performance against Florida, but is a double and capable of scoring double figures, and they're going to try to go at Patterson, make him defend. There's a steal by Meeks. He's also an outstanding defender. In fact, gets a lot, you know, gets a lot of his points off of those steals. Patterson in traffic. Gets it back and puts it through. Well, we talked about defense and offense. Patterson's such a force down in the low blocks. And Chris Johnson, the second best shot blocker in the SEC. A lot of compelling matchups with the key players. LSU has won 12 consecutive conference games. Here's Spencer. He does have great range. And the iron is kind to the youngster from Baton Rouge. While well, they're giving him the ball, it gives them a score at the point guard position. It moves Garrett Temple off the ball and it makes him a play, although he can make plays at the small forward position. Porter is a serviceable point for a point guard. He finds Stevenson. There's another nice look. Good look and lob inside to Perry Stevenson. They need to find a third score. And obviously, those two for Stevenson have been from point blank range. Yeah, a big lift for him. And you remember last year when Patterson was out, he was almost a double double guy down the stretch. So he's capable. Mitchell loses it out of bounds. Bo Spencer trying to settle his guys down. Three possessions, three field goals for Kentucky. Well, it's a great back screen up top, and that was poor communication by LSU, and it uh, freed Stevenson up. Two easy confidence building dunks for him. Same play, Tasman Mitchell now. He's got his head on a swivel. He's looking to get back screened. Meeks, nice runner right over the outstanding defender, Garrett Temple. Uh, and if you haven't seen him play this year, it's such an explosive score and then really just gets it out of the framework of the offense. He really does. They don't run many specials or any specials really to think of. There's Mitchell. He's going to be a very difficult guy for Kentucky to guard. Yeah, no, he, he is the tough matchup and coming off that last year, looks like he got a lot bigger. A moving screen that time is the call. It'll go against the Wildcats. Goes against Michael Porter. You'll see a lot of those uh, screens basically you give it up to Meeks and the guard then tries to set the pick. That time Porter got tagged. And this is the scoring machine for LSU, Marcus Thornton. Stevens and Sages have been way up. Look at that drive to the basket. Yeah, and you know, Ramon Harris is in a tough, they gave him a little bit of an isolation on the right-hand side and he's such a good three-point shooter, you have to honor that. You know, if anything, I think that Kentucky is susceptible to its dribble drive penetration. Patterson. No double that time and against the smaller and more frail body of Chris Johnson, but 
Again, Patterson unable to get it through. And if they do double, they'll double off of everybody except Meeks. Now, he's a face-up big man and does have an ability to hit the outside shot. There's Mitchell. He loves the contact, and he used the ball fake to get Harris airborne. And Ramon picked up the foul. Tasman Mitchell, you were commenting, Mike. We saw him in his freshman year. He was the unsung hero of that final 14 that John Brady had at the time, the head coach of LSU, and he has gotten much stronger since uh, we last saw him. Yeah, certainly, and, and last year we talked about it really limited due to injuries, only played three games, but uh, obviously used that time to improve his body. And uh... People have forgotten, Mike, that this team is just uh, three years removed from a Final Four. Temple, a shutdown defender, and Tasman was a double-figure scorer. Johnson just got uh, complimentary play. Yeah, but those guys now are not ancillary players. They are key components of this team, so not only is it is it deep and it's experience, but it's also Final Four experience. Yeah. But, you know, if you talk about a team in the top 20 that's flying under the radar that could be playing in Detroit at the end of the year, I think LSU is maybe announcing themselves. I would agree. This is by far and away the most disrespected nationally 12 and 2 team out of this conference I've ever covered. I've been watching this league for 30 years. Stevenson again, this time grazing the iron. Tasman Mitchell collects the rebound. Thornton working on Ramon Harris and Quentin Thornton just into the game setting the pick. Nice show by Harris. Four minutes gone by here in Lexington. Shot clock at 10. Tasman Mitchell just inside the arc for the deuce. Well, I know it's a nice play. They ran a little two-man game at the top of the key and as that play broke down, Mitchell followed in behind and got a good look. Eight nothing run now for the Bayou Bengals and they lead by three. After a great start for Kentucky, LSU has answered. Meeks in traffic. Garrett Temple was up to the match. There was no room for him to drive that time. Patterson posted him up down low, and uh, Meeks went right into him. Remember, Jackson is also an outstanding shot blocker, but he's left the game. Quentin Thornton has already come in for him, and without Brian Titus, we may not see much of him. Meeks, long rebound. You'll get plenty of them here. The rims are wound very tight at Rupp Arena. Long rebound by a guard can make a big difference. It's been that way in this building since Rick Pitino started coaching here. Back in the day. Mitchell trying to pass off to Thornton, who was not ready for it. Timeout. Just over five gone by. LSU at eight-nothing spurt. And Tasman can can. We'll be back. Number 18, LSU leads by three. You know, basketball people are not surprised at what's happened since Trent Johnson got to LSU. At Nevada with Nick Vasikas and company, got him to the Sweet 16 in 04. At Stanford, after taking over from Mike Montgomery, got him into the NCAA tournament and a Sweet 16 run. And now, of course, at LSU, he's got them ready to go into the NCAAs yet again. Well, and I think an inspired uh, hire by A.D. Joe Oliva down at LSU. A very impressive man to talk to today. Certainly success to follow him. And he just talked about now the, the pool that he can recruit from at LSU is so much bigger than at Stanford. And, you know, he was the beneficiary of the Lopez twins and uh, the success that they brought out there. But, uh, and I think he's going to do great things. And this, this team reflects his demeanor. Well, you don't have to travel far to find players in Baton Rouge, do you? Hey, no, he can get on a bike and uh, ride around town and basically get a five great players. Jared Temple picks up his first foul trying to check Meeks. And there's Billy Gillespie, the native of uh, Abilene, Texas, now in uh, his second year. He's been coach of the year uh, in every conference he's been in, and uh, in most years, he's almost been coach of the year as many years as he's coached in the profession. Texas El Paso and, of course, AC Law, the great team that he had at Texas A&M. And I recall that year when LSU made it to the Final Four, one of the great games we ever had a chance to cover was the LSU win over Texas A&M in the second round. Yep, and, uh, you know, winds up here. And he talked about the frustrations of this year as far as coaching this team. And uh, he said one of the things is it's, it's been frustrating not knowing uh, what's going to happen from game to game with this ball club. Obviously, he's got his two stars, but then everybody after that has been, been a little bit of a mystery. I think we have a, a timing problem with the clock. You see it shows for whatever reason 144 remaining. Kentucky has gone scoreless now in the last three plus minutes of this game. And uh, frankly, that's been one of the issues 
for the Wildcats is uh, they hit these these moments where they just can't score the ball. Well, and you know, and Trent, Trent Johnson said he didn't believe about other people beating you, and, and Stevenson has had a good game, but Meeks and Patterson combined two of six so far, so they have not been a factor. Porter, that shot will be there for him. Derek Temple clears it for LSU. And I, I think if you're LSU, that you're gonna if, if you're gonna choose somebody to shoot a jump shot, you certainly want Michael Porter taking it instead of Cody Meeks. Thornton, oh, he's got a quick launch. Patterson with a rebound for Kentucky. Quickly meets his double, which leaves Porter open, but he does not take the shot. Yeah, yeah, again, they're gonna they're gonna take their chances and try to get the ball out of Meeks' hands. Jody forcing the issue. Out of bounds to the Tigers. I talked to Garrett Temple today about guarding Meeks, and the thing that you said is he cuts so hard that you've really got to trail him, and that's what makes it difficult. He gets a little brush screen right there from Patterson, but then loses the ball out of bounds. Certainly five sets of eyes focused on him on the defensive end of the floor for LSU. Clinton Thornton, which really gives uh, LSU a better body to work with Patterson against. And Chris Johnson, who, as we said, is ailing coming into this game. Number 32 in purple and goal, likely to play a lot of minutes today. Bo Spencer pumps. Patterson clears for Kentucky. Already three big boards for him. Nice look inside. Darius Miller slapped away by Tasman Mitchell. Quick hands. Miller had 17 against Tennessee a week ago. Spencer forced it that time and came up empty. Looks as though he may have injured his hand. He landed pretty hard on that right wrist. Comes up taking it. And he steals it from Porter. He was cherry picking that time. Temple to the rack, and he's fouled by Porter. Well, there was no communication, and they were down the opposite end of the floor. But if you're a teammate of Porter, you've got to scream out to him that he's got somebody coming up from behind. Look, Porter kind of casual. I think he thinks that uh, Spencer was completely out of the play, but that was good hustle to get back in it. Give him some marks for drama, uh, for uh, drama there too. Shaking the, the right hand made it look as though maybe he was a little banged up, and then got the pilfer. Mm -hmm. And you were the perfect one to pass out awards on drama. <laughs> That's right. The amazing race is pushing the limits, changing lives, and testing relationships. Catch an all-new episode tomorrow on CBS, America's Most Watched Network. Well, you've known me for a while. I have thespian qualities. <laughs> 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 None of them involve good acting, though. Right? <laughs> Seven minutes gone by, and Kentucky's been dry now for four and a half minutes. Unable to get a field goal. Meeks ends that with a reversal. Yeah, very aggressive move that time, and, uh, you know, has the ability to put the ball on the floor, and when you're, when you're having a drought, you don't want to jump shoot your way out of it. You want to attack the rim. Big number 55 for Kentucky, Josh. Harrelson is coming to the game, and right away, Mitchell goes to work. He's got eight big points for the Tigers. He's led the way for them. They're up by four now. You know, it's not it's not a play. It's who's running the play that makes it successful, and Mitchell is a, can be a pick-and-pop pick pick guy, and when you do that, you really stretch the defense. I think Garrett Temple got scratched on the uh, elbow, and they're going to have to tend to that. Stoppage of play there by Mike Nance, one of the officials. Kentucky fans, wait a minute. He's got to get out of the game. He's got blood. And now, now as they take him out, <laughs> the fans say, that's right, you got to take him out. Terry Martin will come into the game for him. There's a fourth referee in the building. <laughs> Trent Johnson I'm, I'm shocked. <laughs> Trent Johnson looked at uh, Mike Nance as if to say, okay, all right. They're supposed to be the sixth man, not the fourth referee. <laughs> They'll patch him up quickly. Meeks. Halfway down the cylinder and out, Ramon Harris went up the back of Thornton. Second foul on Ramon Harris. And he's another athletic player that Kentucky needs on the floor. This is not a deep Kentucky team. One thing they are consistent and have been consistent in is defending down the other end. Thornton off the bounce. Meeks clears it for Kentucky. Okay, it's 
Barton has done a pretty nice job of denying Patterson the position on the block that he wants, Mike. Yeah, no, and, and he's been very active in uh, fronting him, moving around, changing up his defensive position. Harrelson, he found him, though, and Thornton picks up the foul. But it didn't come easily. Quentin Thornton really making him work. Yeah, and you talked about a guy who's physically able, able to counter him. That's the guy. Nothing meek or mild about Jody. That reversal ended a four and a half minute drop. All right, Greg, thank you. Well, that's your ACC under the radar team, Leonard Hamilton's club in Tallahassee. They're, they're in, definitely. Yeah, and uh, the Sheridan Who Belongs, presented by Sheridan, and I think that these clubs right now have all made a very good case. Chances are only three of the four could get in, but I like the chances of all four. Yeah, and uh, South Carolina, I think, is this definitely, and Darren Horn has done a terrific job there. Tennessee, the 10 wins, 10 losses, the first thing you see, but such a strong strength of schedule for Bruce Pearl. Uh, the Kentucky, Florida, the two that I think have to really do work. And, yeah. And this this game is critical and uh, for Kentucky. And don't forget next week, those two will play one another. Yep. And depending upon what happens in that game, the loser might have to do a little damage in the upcoming conference tournament, which will be played this year in Tampa, St. Pete. Now, Florida, the weakest strength of schedule of the group there listed. You know, you really, you can look at the flaws of both teams, and I think the mindset now for all of these clubs just win. Yeah, it's I mean, time to really win your way in. Let's let's not make the card look pretty. Let's just win <laughs> some games. Yeah. Patrick Patterson at the line. All of the field goals for Kentucky have come inside the painted area today. They were four of their first five, and they've been one for seven since from the floor. Uh, LSU's defense has been impressive. Yeah, but these are two very good defensive teams and very underrated defensive teams. Gary Martin back on the floor for LSU along with Tasman Mitchell. Marcus Thornton, an interchangeable part as well, can go to the point. Tasman Mitchell and Chris Johnson, the five on the deck for Trent Johnson. Tasman for three. The iron unkind, Chris Johnson gets the rebound. And that's the thing, even watching film of LSU, if you want to come up with a phrase for me, interchangeable parts probably describes them as well as anything. Thornton, boy, what a look. What a look, does not finish. Stays with it though, Tasman Mitchell with a pilfer. Knocked away by Harrelson. It will be LSU's basketball. All right, Tasman Mitchell is very impressive. Just constant energy on both backboards. I think defensively for Kentucky, they have to give up a body and just face guard him. Kentucky has DeAndre Liggins on the floor now along with Darius Miller, Harrelson, Meeks, and Patterson. Who's played point many times in his career gives it up to Mitchell, not this time. Well, some nice job, at least getting back. We talked about the pick, pick and pop for Tasman Mitchell, but at least he got back to contest that jump shot. Liggins has been an up and down player. There's Meeks running that curl over Temple. Well, wow, look at the job that Temple did though, to get around that double screen and contest the shot. What a terrific piece of defense. He does not allow that much space between himself and the opponent. Chris Johnson on the offensive glass. Too many second chance opportunities right now. This is something Billy Gillespie has talked about all year long. South Carolina killed them on the offensive glass. It's happening in this game. Even in the win against Tennessee, the Vols only had a prayer because of putbacks. There's another one courtesy Chris Johnson. Introducing the People Want It Now event, because the people want a great lease and they want more. The people want to go green. And go fast. The people want value that lasts. The people have always wanted that. The people want to be carefree about maintenance. Am I high maintenance? Nah. The people want to go further on every tank. Uh, the people want to go potty now. The People Want It Now event, happening now. For a limited time, lease a 2009 Jetta, Rabbit, or New Beetle for only $1.99 a month. Legendary Volkswagen value. It's what the people want. For many people, this is their first glimpse of LSU, Mike, this season. They played a nationally televised game earlier this week against Florida. What are your earliest impressions of them, seeing them with your own eyes? Well, again, I, I think they reflect the demeanor of, of Trent Johnson. Very strong defensively, very solid. You know what they're going to do. They run their offense extremely well. They really defend. Uh, you know, this... I don't know that there is this team has many holes in it to be honest with you. Chris Johnson picked up the foul. That is his first. And Patterson gets to the line. 
This has now become a 13 to 2 run for LSU. Run your bracket competition online for free with Bracket Manager. Invite your friends, fill out brackets, and Bracket Manager does the rest. Sign up now at cbssports.com slash brackets. You know, we talked about Marcus Thornton, Jim, but I, you know what? If, if Tasman Mitchell doesn't get hurt last year, you know, Trent Johnson may not be here. Well, he said that. As, as coach. You know, yes, and he said that. He, he is such an important part of what they do, and, and just his return this year has completely changed this team. And you know what? I thought that was an extremely humble thing for him to say because John Brady did bring all of his talent in here and did have success. As you see, a nice move with the left hand by Tasman Mitchell. Yeah, it is, you know, he shoots the three-pointer with accuracy, but that's not his game. He likes to get into the paint area, use that body. He had 41 in a game against Mississippi State that went into double overtime. Meeks, another steal. This time it was Garrett Temple that got his hand in there to deflect it into Tasman Mitchell's hand. And Meeks trying to make a play that time, and the one thing that Meeks will do, kick it around a lot, uh, he is prone to turnovers. Mitchell lost it, but got it back. Terry Martin's an outside sharpshooter, and he gets the shooter's roll. This team, LSU, gets most of its scoring from its starters, but he's the guy who can come off the bench and give them a little pop. He's really the only option for offense that Trent Johnson has off the bench. The lost art in college basketball, finding a sixth man with an offensive explosion. Another wow. block by Garrett Temple. That is big time. Well, here's the luck, and uh, you're talking about the kind iron oh, yes. on that play. But then watch it. This is just man up defense against a great score. He gets some help from Johnson inside. But Garrett Temple, oh. what a terrific defender. Oh, that is. Absolutely a clean block. Hands didn't like it, but it was all leather. If there's a better perimeter defender in the country, I want to see him. Marcus Thornton will come in on the next dead ball for LSU. Mo Spencer from way downtown. And he is an outstanding three-point shooter. He's been at a 40% clip all season long and a timeout taken by Kentucky as the LSU Tigers have doubled them up lead by a score of 24 to 12. Oh that was almost from Georgetown. reinvent traffic. We reinvented how the driver navigates around it. With advanced XM real-time traffic and predictive weather, suddenly the world's not so complex. The all-new 2010 Lexus RX. As we were going to break, I was reminded by our able producer Ken Mack that most people would think Georgetown is not in Kentucky, but there is a Georgetown. In Kentucky. And you might have been in front. That three was far <laughs> enough out, and it could have been Georgetown up in D.C. <laughs> Kentucky with five field goals, seven turnovers, but Mike only one field goal in the last nine minutes plus. Well, Meeks gets a little bit of a break now with Martin on him defensively. Galloway is coming to the game for the first time. Kevin Galloway did not play the other night because of the death of his grandfather. Shot clock winding down, and again, LSU's hands get in the way. Nice recovery. Galloway to Patterson. And, and Galloway's most important job may be down on the defensive end of the floor. He draws Marcus Thornton right now. But uh, a lot of poise on that play with the shot clock on his back and the big finish by Patterson. Mitchell knocked away. Good defensive work. Meeks with a two-on-one break. Kill solo. I didn't think he was going to give it up to Michael Porter on that play. With all due respect, he just had it in his mind he was going to carry it to the rim. 7:35 remaining. LSU leads by eight. Couple of quick steals enabling Kentucky to score four points in 29 seconds 
after they went nine minutes without a bucket. And after that flurry that uh, Garrett Temple back in the game because uh, Trent Johnson does not want Meeks to get going right here. Only three players have scored for Kentucky to this point as their three leading scorers in Porter, Stevenson, and Patterson. Now, Jody Meeks is a guy that if he gets any confidence, that cylinder widens very quickly. Temple on a blow by. Lost it on the way up. Stevenson got his hand in there. Perry Stevenson releases it into the hands of Galloway. So Tasman Mitchell's defensive transition is pretty good. He got down there in a hurry. Back with more from Rupp Arena on what has been a day full of great basketball on CBS. As you look at our game summary, we began the game, Mike Jaminski, talking about dynamic duos. Up until this point, certainly one half of each have gotten the job done, but Tasman Mitchell has been great on both ends of the floor. No, he's given them a lot of confidence offensively, Tim, and uh, does it in so many different ways. The beautiful pump fake right there to improve his jump shot. He can knock down the three. He's talked about it 50% from there, and then also get into the paint, finish with the left hand. Four of seven, ten points for him in this game. It's the big thing, the big concern for uh, Billy Gillespie right now, turnovers for his yeah. squad, seven so far in the first 12 and a half minutes. And it's been an issue for his club all season long. There's absolutely no doubt. This is, in many people's estimation along the Commonwealth, one of the most important, if not the most important regular season game, he's coached. He's, his club has been up and down. There have been issues with a few players, including A.J. Stewart, who thought he was going to dismiss himself. That alley -oop does not go. Would have wowed the crowd off the inbounds had it gone. But then he was dismissed, and the players were allowed to vote whether he could come back. They voted him in, so he's back in. He told us yesterday that for the last week or so, he's just not sure what he's going to get from the majority of his players in 29 games in, Mike. You don't want to be talking about that as a coach. No, you felt that all year. And this is not the time to be answering questions, Tim. This is the time to be fine-tuning and uh, providing most of the answers. So that's just not a good position to be in. Wow. Bo Spencer. Trigger happy, that Tiger. 27 to 16. That was a deep three. Yeah, no, he's, he's had a couple of them, and you can sense the, the uh, confidence growing with each one. Just under 12 points per game for him. We talked about uh, his emergence. There's a little high-low between Meeks and Patterson. Well done. Well, you know, Tim, right now that Kentucky is dominating the points in the paint. You saw it in the graphic coming out of the break. But I think LSU will live playing a two-point basket game with Kentucky and keeping Meeks under control. Good passing inside to Thornton. He's yet to really get on track. Chris Johnson runs down the offensive rebound. Nice spin move. The ball does not go down. There's quick help this time by Thornton. Nearly caused the turnover. Stevenson. And Marcus Thornton gets the rebound. I think when Meeks goes to sleep tonight, he's going to see number 14 in his eyes. <laughs> this team, Mike, is long. And I think that's what makes it such a tough matchup for a lot of clubs. There's Thornton. He's got that capability to just pop it. Yeah, we, we talked about Galloway and, and his responsibility. And he's got the size to match it. We talked about length and putting on Thornton, but there's a quick release. Galloway had his hands down on that play. He's only got the four points, but I'm telling you, he can get it going in a hurry. Can Marcus Thornton? There's a steal by Spencer. Yeah, Patterson did the wrong thing. He brought the ball down right into the guard's lap. Thornton wants it. Not this time. Patterson clears. Sixth rebound of the day for Patrick Patterson, sophomore from Huntington, West Virginia. Stevenson, nice presence of mind to get Johnson airborne. He'll get to the free throw line. Well, Vitamin Water Revive is asking fans to revive their game. Winning moment at the NCAA.com slash revive for a chance to win a trip to this year's NCAA Men's Final Four. Perry Stevenson at the free throw line. This was a guy, Mike, that a year ago when Patterson got hurt, almost averaged a double-double. He was about nine points and nine boards during the time Patterson was out. They've been waiting for him to take off, and to this point, it has not happened. Well, again, I'll make the point, if you're waiting at game 29, um, yeah. you know, I don't know there's going to be any great epiphany, but, uh, you know, he's, he scored pretty well tonight. That was a good pump fake. 
over his last four. It only averaged five points a game, so well under his average. 29-19. LSU went on a 13-2 run early and have not looked back. Thornton off the screen, did not get it to fall. Boy, Meeks was open and Porter missed him. One of the rare opportunities, now he gets it. And uh, Temple will pick up the foul with a hand check. He is perpetual motion off the ball. You've got to find him when he's open. Yeah, and they, they run a lot of screens for him, and uh, so that, that wears you down as a defender. Temple coming out right now, but that's what he talked about, the speed and the pace. You know, you, some guys make cuts, but if you do them lazily, you don't get open. Meeks is full out all the time. It is nice when your hardest working players are also your best players, and that's true with Kentucky. Patterson and Meeks work harder than anyone else on the floor. It's like with, with so many teams, though, Tim, that uh, point guard play is so important. You've got those components. You've got to have a guy to complement that, and it's been a search for Kentucky. Nice reach in that time by the youngster Storm Warren, the freshman from Richwood High School in Monroe, getting his first playing time of the day. You could argue Tennessee is in, in, in a similar situation. Yes, they are. Struggling with both Josh Tabb and uh, Bobby Mays. Patterson a pull up. Missed a couple games recently with an ankle, but looks uh, no worse for the wear right there, showing the ability to pull off and face up with 18-foot range. Well, he's on his way to a double-double. He's got 10 points and six boards, and the Kentucky faithful rise to attention. Martin for three. Count it. A silencer from the veteran Terry Martin, senior transfer from Texas Tech. He's giving them a nice lift off the bench. We're talking about bench scores. Six points for him, both of those from three. Porter on the wing. Patterson regathers. And Warren's gonna get, get him with the body. First foul on Storm Warren. Terry Martin. Really stepped up a few weeks ago when Spencer was out with an injury. There's another one dropping. LSU leads it by 11, 32 to 21 here at Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. Today on CBS, it's the episode that will remind you why CSI is TV's number one drama. Singer Taylor Swift guest stars on an all-new CSI Thursday on CBS, America's most watched network. I know. I think this scoring pace right now is to LSU's benefit, Tim. Uh, you know, Kentucky does not want this game to get up into the 80s, even though it's being played here at home. Well, Meeks has been corralled so far by LSU defensively. Now, granted, Garrett Temple, the principal defender, is saddled with two fouls and may not play the remaining 3:05 of this half. But uh, Meeks is going to get a seat for a moment. Only six points, three of eight from the floor, and he's turned it over three times, too. Well, and, and the key thing for him is they have guarded outside in with him. They are not giving him any looks from three. He averages just under four threes a game, but they're going to turn him into a driver and a two-point shooter. You hear that clink. <laughs> Hard this, iron. These, these rims, I think, are the reason why I, 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 I decided that the, the iron could be unkind. <laughs> Originally, they are so loud and so tight. I mean, you've got to have a feathery touch to drain one here. 32 to 23. Mitchell. Boy, Tasman has just been in rhythm. All game long. Well, that's a nice slip of the screen, too. They were playing a two-man game instead of coming off it. Thornton just waited, and Taz Mitchell found the, the, the seam. For, it's right about 15 feet. 12 points for Tasman Mitchell to lead LSU. Darius Miller's back on the floor now. There's Patterson. Quickly doubled again. Well, and now with Meeks out of the game, they're going to dig down, and you can see Spencer just smiling because Porter wouldn't pull the trigger on that jump shot. Patterson, again, good use of the ball fix. I mean, that looked like a pretty good shot, Mike. It barely went through. Yep, and, uh, and now with, with, we talk about with Meeks out of the game, they can come and double-team with anybody inside, and despite that, Patterson able to score. 14 points and seven rebounds for Patrick Patterson. 
Haslund steps out. Thornton really finding it. No, you know what? I love that. The same play that, uh, you know, Trent Johnson runs something until the other team can stop it. They've scored on that same play two consecutive possessions. Really unselfish play, too, by Thornton. He likes to shoot. Stevenson missed the slam. I think they're going to get the uh, bucket, yes, off the defensive uh, interference of the goal. Well, don't forget, coming up on AT&T at the half, Greg and Seth will have all of today's scores and highlights, plus an AT&T Naismith watch update. That's all coming up on AT&T at the half. I think they called no, offensive. It is, it is. Stevenson, Stevenson hung on the right. rim and then pulled it down, so it's uh, no basket. Obviously, offensive goal in it. <laughs> I know where your heart is, partner. I'm trying to get there. <laughs> Come on, it's almost March. Please, it's halftime. I'm trying to get there. <laughs> Here's Jody Meeks in the open floor. Well, again, good defense this time by Terry Martin against Jody Meeks. You can see that the defense right now, no open looks from behind the arc for Jody Meeks. They're going to make him drive the basketball. And, then, and right now, Tim, he may have to accept that. And instead of forcing things, try to get into the rim, make an old-fashioned three-point play. Look at some of those scores Georgetown has win today over Villanova. They were desperately in need of a victory in the Big East. And Wake Forest uh, against a very tough Virginia team that played well of late. Came away with a 10-point win. Meeks off the pick. Count it. Yep. Martin just a notch slower than Garrett Temple. And that's all that Meeks needed. A little brush screen, just a little bit of room. All things considered, though, Garrett Temple left the game with over four remaining, Mike, with the second foul. And they've managed to keep Meeks under wraps for the most part. And they've managed to keep the lead about the same, too. So they really haven't lost anything, and they've lost some time for him. Mitchell. Offensive foul. It'll go the other way. There's the look, and uh, he, he would have been better served to just pull up and shoot the little floater instead of taking one dribble too many. Nice job of Patterson giving up that big body. Kentucky looking to get that last big hoop. Get the mojo working well, before halftime. Man, that was a, maybe a mental lapse, I think, by Taz and by LSU. You want to make sure you take the last shot of the half. Don't give this crowd any momentum, and don't give this team any momentum. Bucket here could cut it to six, and that wouldn't be bad the way that uh, these teams have played. Alex Farr is coming to the game for Mitchell. Spencer dogging Porter. Loose again, coming off that screen. Forces it up. Horton the rebound. At the buzzer, he caught some iron. That had a chance. Wow. At the half, it's 36-28 LSU. We'll send you to Greg Gumbel in New York with AT&T at the half. You're watching CBS Sports, exclusive home of the men's NCAA Basketball Championship. At halftime, LSU with the lead. Kentucky began the SEC season 5-0, but they've lost five of their last eight. And Mike Chaminsky, who joins me, I think they need to come out spitting fire in the second half. This is a very important 20 minutes coming up for them, and Meeks has really been shut down. No, they've really defended him very well at every turn. They've contested jump shots, and he really had somebody in his shirt the whole time. And you knew that. I mean, he was going to be the focal point. Here you see the contested jump shot. A lot of jerseys around him that time on the drive. Every time they comes off a two-man game, there's going to be the double team. And then Garrett Temple, although picked up his second foul late in that first half, did a terrific job defending him man-on-man. -man. As you look at the Hartford first-half stats, what's kept Kentucky in it? The points in the painted area. Yeah, Patrick Patterson inside has done a terrific job, although they still need to find some balance. Only three players scored for the Wildcats in that first half. LSU a little bit more even distribution. Only one three-pointer for Kentucky. That came in the last 40 seconds. One forced up by Meeks. Kentucky averages 76 again. They're on pace for 56 today. Ball was deflected by the Wildcats. It'll be out of bounds to LSU. Kentucky's bench, 18 combined minutes played, no points. It's a different starting lineup out there here in the first, in the start of the second half for Kentucky. Maybe the coaching staff was a little upset at the break. Some different players out there, some defensive players. Temple can't connect. Darius Miller is new on the floor. So Porter is sitting down, and that brings Galloway out to the point. 
And the idea is to get number 23 a bit more involved, one would think. Alley oop for Patterson. Well, and that was a great play. Meeks on the cut through, and then he comes up and sets a back screen for Patterson inside. Well designed play. So Perry Stevenson yep. and Porter have uh, undoubtedly gone out of the uh, starting rotation and into the doghouse of Billy Gillespie as you see LSU counter with a quick layup. Thornton right away back involved. 16 points, eight boards for this man, Patrick Patterson. Feed and fan the big fella. Right, especially if they're not going to come with any double team help inside. Chris Johnson just not nearly wide enough. I mean, he gets swallowed up when he plays behind Patterson. Kentucky faithful on their feet, and Temple threw it away. He was anticipating a backdoor cut from Johnson. It did not happen. Yeah, and it's, you know, the, the one thing, I love to say the saying, you make, you catch and you pass with two hands, and Temple a little too fancy that time. He couldn't pull it back because it was a one-handed pass. Galloway, a runaway, and a foul will go against Chris Johnson. And that'll be his third. Quentin Thornton likely to come in for him. Check that. That's number two on CJ. Well, Galloway is a guy who can give you seven to ten points in a game. He has done that this year. Gets to start here. We talked about his defensive capabilities. But that's the thing you have to do against a shot blocker with Johnson inside. Go right at his chest. Negate his jumping ability. Kevin Galloway, transfer from Southern Idaho out of Sacramento, California. Considered a, a really a multi-talented uh, player, but like so many for this Kentucky team, has just not gotten in a, an offensive rhythm this season. He brings them to within four here in the opening moments of the second half. And in many respects, this fan base believes their season is on the line right now. Thornton in traffic. Quentin Thornton to follow. Gets it back up again. Oh, and some booing from the crowd. They felt maybe he got away with an offensive foul. Well, right, and if the thing, if you could accuse the Thornton of anything on that play, he might have dipped his shoulder a little bit, but a good no call. Patterson. Yeah, I think, I, you know, it looks like right now LSU is resigned to the points that Patterson's going to score, and they're going to stay at home and everybody else. They're not giving any double team help. There's no question that the intensity level has picked up this crowd very much into it. This club did not lose a game, a single game at home last year, and it helped get them into the tournament for the 17th consecutive year. As you see a foul, it'll go against Meeks. Already four home losses this year, though, Tim. It has not been a strong home court advantage for Kentucky. Well, it kind of began with a VMI loss and moved forward. Be a huge win over a top 50 RPI team for Kentucky. Spencer. Miller the rebound. Here comes Meeks in the open floor. He loves this look. He's rejected by Temple. Out of bounds to LSU. Took it a little too deep, didn't he? Uh, well, I mean, you know, to talk about the career that Temple has, he has over 100 blocks and well over 100 steals. Can do so many things defensively to hurt you. Got the chance at halftime to see his father, Collis Temple, first African-American player in the history of LSU. has done so much in the Baton Rouge community with their recreational department. And, uh, in many respects, got these kids started when they were in diapers. There's a rejection by Miller. Meeks on the runoff. The Wildcats have clawed to within two. Well, wow, the change in the lineup from the first to the second half clearly with an eye to defense, and it has paid dividends here early. I'd say they're spitting fire, wouldn't you? All right, Greg, you've got to go all the way back to the 50s for uh, a, an outright Pac-10 title. 53. 53, 53. but Renzo Romar, congratulations. Arizona, a bit like Kentucky, has been streaking NCAA tournament appearances. They lead the way 24 in succession. 
And uh, of course, Arizona's could be in jeopardy, and so too the Kentucky Wildcats. That is uh, rarefied air, those programs. Well, and you know, Arizona with the two uh, interim coaches back to back years, it's amazing they've been able to keep that streak intact. Well, we talked about Kentucky's 20 minutes coming up, perhaps the most crucial of their year, and here's why. Well, and if you take the name of Kentucky Wildcats off that resume, it looks pretty average, and, you know, with the, uh, with the RPI and the strength of schedule. Those key wins right there, but uh, this is a very much a marquee brand, and that certainly factors into it. Billy Gillespie's club with the uh, change. With Stevenson sitting down to open this half. And the same for Michael Porter. Definitely ignited this club defensively. Yeah. Patterson has 20 in the game, six this half, and that's a carry by Martin. Well, near the end of today's game, we'll select the Chevrolet player of the game from each team in recognition of continued excellence on and off the court. Chevrolet will make a contribution to each university's general scholarship fund to support the development of new technologies and innovations. Learn more about Chevy Innovations at Chevy.com. Meets deflected again, this time by Martin. And the Wildcats a little aggressive on that end of the floor and a foul spotted. Well, we, talked about, it up. we talked about Garrett Temple and the defense. Look at the job that Martin does fighting through that screen and then getting a hand up. They are just not going to let him get any sort of look from three. And that's a frustration foul from Jody, too. Bo Spencer operating at the point with Marcus Thornton, Quentin Thornton, Tasman Mitchell, who's not taking a shot in this half, and Terry Martin, the five on the floor for LSU. That's where you want it, and A.J. Stewart's going to commit the foul. Well, A.J. Stewart, an interesting story after the South Carolina game, apparently got into a uh, verbal tirade with one of his uh, fellow combatants, not named, but apparently it did happen, and decided to walk out, and then changed his mind and was reinstated, and according to the head coach, by the team. It was a collective team vote by the Wildcats that allowed him to return. Spencer giving it up to Marcus Thornton on the wing. And Quentin Thornton pushes Patterson. CBS Sports coverage of NCAA men's basketball continues after this message and a word from your local station. 40 to 38, the Tigers of LSU with the lead over Kentucky, and uh, we know they're in the tournament. How about some other Tigers in the tournament? Mike Jaminski. Yeah, Clemson Tigers uh, lost today, but uh, are definitely in. Jackson State won 12 of their last 13. And those Memphis, Memphis Tigers really coming on strong at the end of the year. By Antonio Anderson, and uh, by the way, the Missouri Tigers of Mike Anderson, number 11 and running a seven game win streak right now. And of course, that man, Trent Johnson, has a nine game win streak underway, 12 in succession in conference play. I tell you, Mike, if you get to say 14 and 2, or you know, if they happen to win this game, run it to 15 and 1, they may only be a, a fourth seed. That's almost unheard of right? to win a conference. Now, granted, the SEC has struggled this year. It's not uh, in one of its up cycles, but uh, that would be incredible to have a gaudy record like that and uh, not get any better than, say, the fourth line in the season process by the selection committee. And right now, they're about a six or seven, according to most observers. Right, and you know what? I don't really think they care about it. And no. I don't really know. Trent trying to say, all right, let's just go out and take care of business like we've been doing all year and earn it. Foul well, spotted against LSU. They go against Quentin Thornton. This is why they would be so low. It's strength of schedule, and I, they played a number of state schools, and frankly, Trent Johnson, upon taking the job, was concerned, Mike, about academics during the Thanksgiving and Christmas holidays, and because of the APR concern, they played a very weak non-conference well, schedule. And had a little bit of a, a rough stretch, went out and got whacked by Utah, and then yep. came back and lost their first uh, conference game, and then uh, a little bit of a prayer meeting with the coach and players, and they've been on a roll ever since. Meeks. Drops one through, and suddenly we're tied at 40. Why, well, as much as anything, this crowd is really, they understood the importance of these last 20 minutes. Thornton pulls away, does not get it to fall. Out of bounds, last touch by Galloway. 
And it, it's just been a different defensive team out there for Kentucky from the start of this second half. Let's see how LSU handles this run. They led by eight at the break. And you, frankly, a little sideline warning being given by Mike Stewart, one of the officials to the Kentucky bench. And it's not greeted well by the fans here at Rupp. This is the steadying influence, Mike. Tasman Mitchell for LSU in these sequences. Well, and he has not had a field goal attempt in this half, Tim, and they have really shut him out. Gary Martin throws up an air ball, and Meeks comes away with it. That was just the, you can't settle for that type of shot. Patterson working it on Chris Johnson. The help forces the turnover. Yeah, they finally started digging in and doubling. Thornton all the way to the rack, and he's fouled by Miller. Talk about guys who need to get going. Marcus Thornton, 3 of 14 in this game, has not hit a 3. We've talked about Meeks. Thornton trying to find some rhythm. Did a nice job attacking the rim. Maybe gets a little confidence in his stroke at the free throw line. NCAA March Madness On Demand is back. Every game from the first round through the NCAA championship will be available live online for free. Get complete details and sign up for email notifications at NCAA.com. Our friend and young Jason Horowitz will be a busy man online with a little bit of help during the NCAA tournament. LSU's first points in the last three minutes and 38 seconds. They lead by two. Miller for three. Freshman from Maysville, Kentucky, igniting this crowd at Rupp Arena. Well, and you know what? Mitchell was laying off, and he was daring him to shoot that shot. Spencer with the answer. Kentucky had gotten their first lead since it was 8-7 to seven in the very early going. That's a, that's a killer. You give up a, a you know, you, you make it a long bomb and a three, and then you give up a layup on the other end. He got away from Temple that time. Got a nice little brush screen at the top of the free throw line. Horton, tough shot. Taken away by Galloway. Meeks gets away again. What a motor. Knocked away. Good defensive work by Thornton. Boy, those two, we talk about their gaudy offensive statistics, but two great defensive plays on either end. Here's the look ahead. Thornton not giving up on the play. Good, good play. You get in a hand, that ball goes straight down. You've got mostly ball. Alley oop. Patterson unable to corral it. Now does so. Over Jackson. That's the strength you were talking about, Mike. That's a 30-pound advantage over Chris Johnson. Wow, he can create that space, and he did it without fouling that time, just creating some space to get up to the rim. Kentucky 8 of 10 from the floor this half. Spencer. Well, halfway down the cylinder and out, and Meeks is on the loose again. What a blow by. Tasman Mitchell knocks it away from Harris. And then Tasman Mitchell, such a leader for this team, saying, you know what, we need to slow this baby down. And uh, Craig Johnson wants a timeout and gets it. Kentucky has taken the lead, one of the most storied programs, with its back against the wall. Dad? Hmm? It's time. We'd be a really nice catch for somebody. Please? Just for Men takes five easy minutes, targets only the gray hair, and can start something great yes! just for men for the price of a night in how about a night out applebee's two for 20 menu one great appetizer to share two amazing entrees and lots of choice applebee's two for 20 the best deal in the neighborhood thursday on cbs a survivor first a secret alliance unlike anything you've seen before don't miss a new Survivor Thursday on CBS, America's most watched network. Tim Brando, Mike Kaminsky here at Rupp Arena, and uh, Billy Gillespie got his team's attention at the break, didn't he? Well, and, uh, you know, some, some key moves, getting Miller and Galloway into the lineup for offense and defense. Certainly so much to play for conducting this game, and, but no less so for LSU has a chance to win the regular season title outright. Warren comes up empty. Chris Johnson, Terry Martin, and Quentin Thornton, who's playing with four fouls, had to sit down with those four. 
Here's Jody Meeks. Count it and the foul. There's the look. I mean, you let a great player get to his strong hand and bad things happen. That time Mitchell kind of a weak reach in right there. He needs to slide his body over and cut off penetration, but Meeks too good a chance for a three-point play. And I talked about old-fashioned three-point plays, Tim. Meeks' his number is creeping back up to the average fifth best scorer in the country. He has nine in this half already. He's seven short of his average. Well, and the thing is, with a great scorer, he's going to get his points. You want to make him shoot a low percentage, and he is at 50% right now. And again, no shots for Tasman Mitchell in this half. Thornton still trying to get on track. Loses it again. Tried to force the issue that time. That was the problem with Marcus Thornton in the past. There were times that he would try to do it too soon, too quickly on his own. This year, that's not been a problem for him, and one of the reasons why LSU is Florida. Shot clock down to 10. Perry Stevenson back on the floor for the first time this half. Galloway feeds Stewart for three. Too strong, Raymond Harris, the offensive rebound. Let's see, if you're LSU, that can't happen. Patrick Patterson's out of the game. You've got a smaller team, and you can't give up offensive rebounds like that. Miller with the putback rather than Harris, but it was still a huge offensive rebound for Kentucky. Galloway looking inside for Stevenson. Stewart finds him. What a nice look. Really nice. Any question? The more desperate team? Kentucky by 10. The Big Blue have been putting on quite a show here in the second half, Mike Jaminski. It's now 11 of 14 from the floor and a 26 to 8 run for Kentucky. And that is uh, from the end of uh, the first half to now. That's impressive. There's been a different intensity about this team to start the second half. It started with the lineup change. It paid dividends on both floors. But I was impressed. It really started on the defensive end of the floor. Much more of a purpose. You're talking about an LSU team that's the highest scoring team in the SEC. They've scored eight points in nine minutes so far. And you see LSU's down to one timeout remaining. And I, I certainly understand Trent Johnson needed to call those timeouts. Absolutely, it's a critical time for this club. And uh, Tasman Mitchell finally gets the ball in a scoring position and is fouled. Timeout, just under 11 to play. Kentucky is taking command here in the second half and lead by 10. A good one, though, and certainly a great one coming up next Sunday. One of the greatest rivalries in all of sports as Duke takes on North Carolina and it'll be right here on CBS Sports the exclusive home of the NCAA men's basketball championship well, you and I have had the honor of calling that game many times and it is fantastic I did the game uh, this year at Cameron and uh, North Carolina very impressive coming in and dropping 101 points on the Blue huh. Devils in that building and a win and uh, Duke in a pitch battle right now against Virginia Tech and they have to play at home against Florida State this week so the road very tough over to Chapel Hill Particularly when you consider what they're trying to do to stay out of uh, having to play an additional game in that league. So many teams struggling to get into the top four of that conference. Tom Warren left alone. They're daring him to shoot. Bill Tasman Mitchell launch a shot on goal. This will be his first trying to split the double team. He's kicked. Crowd disagrees, and it goes against Perry Stevenson. And that man disagrees as well. <laughs> They're trying off, and that's tough because they've got Stevenson playing Mitchell, and then they're chipping in with Patterson as well. And uh, Mitchell did well to draw a foul on that play and even get through it. There's the dump down to Mitchell over Stevenson. Tough shot, but he gets it to fall. His first bucket of this half. Yeah, he, he had to go quickly, and Patterson was not in a position to come and double team, and uh, nobody could come down from the top, so he did get a clean look. Darius Miller has been very active. He's coming into the game. He and Galloway 
really ignited this team in the second half. And Garrett Temple gets a cheap one this time. And that's number four. He didn't like that one. No, and, and you got to talk. He's going to come out of the game right now, but they gave Meeks a clear out on the right side of the floor. Temple was on an island that time. Terry Martin checks back in for him. Martin had actually does, has done a pretty decent job defending it in his own right. He's not Temple, he's not of that class, but has, has really gotten uh, Meeks at least contested shots. Watch to see what he can do here. Shot clock winding down. There's the alley oop to Patterson right by Warren. They've had a lot of success with that play, Timmy. They run a little screen down for Meeks, and then he comes back up and back screens Patterson. Anytime you've got a guard picking a big, you can't get a switch. 24 on the game for Patterson. One of the things Mike South Carolina was able to do to Kentucky on Wednesday night, now granted they've got Downey and Sam Frederick, was they drove to the basket. There's Thornton with a three ball to cut into that lead. But we talked about it earlier, the ability to beat Kentucky off the dribble to the rack, spread them and then drive them. They've not been able to do that in the second half, LSU. Here comes that same play. Amazing how much this team does with two primary players. Shot clock down to six. Jody's going to have to do it on his own. He gets doubled. Nice defensive work by Mitchell. Leads to a turnover. Spencer to Martin. Count it. Uh, that was a great defensive stand out front by LSU. Really focusing on Meek's solid footwork. They get the steal and the turnover. Both of these coaches drive on their teams being tough on the defensive end. And the foul will go against Marcus Thornton, and this was a tough sequence for LSU. Now, you, there you see the solid double team and Tasman Mitchell with the quick hands, and that's a good look ahead and a good catch. Talk about the lack of timeouts for LSU. They've got a veteran club built in, and I think you can live with that. Meeks going back door. Got away from Martin that time. You're going to overplay, and as, as hard as he cuts and as active as he is without the ball, he is going to get some backdoor cuts. I think this is the guy of LSU is going to stay in it. Has to catch fire and count it and a foul. He has a green light, and he will continue to look to score. What's beyond a green light? I mean, that's, <laughs> what, that's what he and Meeks have in this game. And let's <laughs> not that it's going to turn into a two-man battle, but those two going at one another. Darius Miller got the foul, his second. And they the, saw, the, the, again, the, the weak kind of reach-in right there at the end of the play. You have to commit to coming over and moving your feet. Young man from Kilgore Junior College. As we mentioned, that the, the book on him had been that maybe at times he tried to do too much. The old adage of Johnny Juco. Well, this year uh, he's taking better shots and he's getting perhaps the best looks of his career, largely because of Bo Spencer becoming an outstanding point guard. 58-54, Kentucky, under eight to play. Pick and roll to Patterson. Too strong, Stevenson with a follow. Thornton collects the rebound for LSU. All of that emotion from the Wildcats to get to that 10-point lead. LSU now with a little return to sender of their own. Thornton running the curl in traffic. Oh, how good, how good is that? Talk about two guys moving without the basketball. And Thornton, it is so hard to go to your left like that, fading away and finish with your right hand. That is a big time score, partner. Meyer threw a three for 14 start, and you see it's not shaking his confidence no, at all. No. He forgot about that already. He's, he's two for two at this <laughs> point. Now he's, now he's hot. Meeks. Orton brings it down. And now LSU shoots for the tie or the lead on this possession. Wow. Oh, Thornton with a great cut, but was rejected. Great work by Miller. What a pass by Mitchell. Nice pick by Stevenson. Miller rejected by Warren. 
all leather, big time. The offensive play, you have to admire it, and then the purple and gold collapse. But LSU's on a run, G-Man. Staying in it with that kind of play. Kentucky lighting it up as you look at our game summary. 65% field goal shooting in the second half. And it's been the dynamic duo stepping up for the Big Blue in the second half. They were trailing at the break. Patrick Patterson kept them in the game in the first half, and Jody Meeks has come up in the second half. Some great screens inside. Patterson has continued to score 10 of 14 inside. And then Meeks has finally gotten untracked in this game. Shooting 9 of 18. Now still only 1-3, but 20 points. 20 44 points between them, Tim. 44 of the 58 Kentucky points. And for LSU, it's been Marcus Thornton that has countered. He's scored eight points for the Tigers in the last three minutes to get them back in the hunt after trailing by 10 just moments ago. This team was in Paris on Wednesday night in South Carolina. This is a statement game for them. Patterson rejected again by Warren. Two blocks in a row for Warren inside. Boy, LSU has got an outstanding play by the freshman Storm Warren. Came of age in that double overtime win against Mississippi State. Probably the best game not televised all year was that double overtime win LSU got against Mississippi State in Starkville. There's Meeks and an easy one over Spencer. And that's, a, you know what, Jody Meeks in this half, Timmy, has gotten more of those types of baskets. Still getting hounded in the half court, but he's gotten some breakaway layups that have freed him up. 22 for Meeks, 13 this half. A steal by Stevenson, but he lost it out of bounds right at Trent Johnson's feet. Nice effort on his part. Here's the look inside, and anytime you pass it out that way without any idea, it's the first pass to a fast break. Meeks converts. There's just no way you can get back defensively to help. I really have to give LSU a lot of credit to him without, without timeouts, and uh, they have clawed their way back into this game with the 10-point lead that Kentucky built up. The crowd was on their back, but they showed a lot of poise. Yeah, and they've done this with their best defender of Meeks on the bench with four fouls. Well, and you know what? And, and you look at it, and uh, Billy Gillespie said this about LSU. He says he's seen them bend a lot this year, but never break, and they haven't cracked in this game. Spencer tries to save it and does. Looking for the alley-oop. Did not happen. What a steal by Thornton. Spencer for three. Loose ball underneath. Out of bounds to LSU. Well, that reaction from Billy Gillespie was lefty Drizelle-esque. <laughs> was it not? <laughs> no left-hander would love that. Thornton working on Harris. He pumps. Wow. You, you remember, you, you think he's forgotten about the 3 of 14 I believe, start then? Yeah, I believe so. He is now 4 of 6 in his mind and on fire. That was a huge turnaround right there for LSU. Five points, five or six point swing. Might I remind you that this would be two teams out of the sixth ranked RPI conference playing right now? Doesn't look like it, does it? No, it, well, it's, you know, it, it's just what the game means. And that's, that's, right. it, it's, that's all that matters right now. It means the world to Kentucky and it means a possible outright championship for LSU. Too many, throw that RPI stuff out the window. Too much at stake here. Thornton all the way to the rack, right at Patterson. Spencer tries to save it. It belongs to Kentucky. And Marcus Thornton can't believe he didn't get a whistle that time, taking it right to Patterson. <laughs> Trent Johnson asking for an explanation, too. Times like this, it settles into a bit of a possession-to-possession possession grinder, and that's what we have going on right now. There have been a lot of substitutions for Kentucky. This yeah. group has gone most of the way. Meets the dump down to Patterson. Working on Warren again. Didn't get any help that time and took advantage of it. Uh, and, well, the key thing was he caught it so deep in the lane that even if help did come, it couldn't get there in time. 
Another standing ovation for the Kentucky defense. Mitchell. That's inside the arc. It's 62-61. Win or lose, I believe LSU has gotten the nation's attention to that. No, no question about it. On both ends of the floor, look at that. Morton with a near steal. Loose ball run down by Harris. He gives it up to Miller. Foul spotted. It will go against Terry Martin, his first. 318 remaining. Patrick Patterson doing the job for Kentucky right now. Duke, hold on. 72, 65. Tim and Mike, back to you. All right, thank you, Greg. And uh, Virginia Tech will have North Carolina coming to Castle very soon as you look at our game reset here. LSU's done a nice job of holding on to that one remaining timeout. Right, and it's, it, again, it shows you the value of a veteran ball club when you can do that. And uh, he's massaged, and Trent Johnson knew he had to get through that section of the game. Well, big things are happening in late night this week when Dave hosts a special five-night performance by U2 and a top ten from the World Baseball Classic. Then Craig Ferguson's got Paris Hilton. CBS Late Night is better than ever and all new this week. Meeks at the free throw line. A big, big second half he's had. Huge miss there, though. Opening the door for LSU. Wow, it's one of the best free throw shooters in the country. Over 90% to miss the front end, too. Hurts. Thornton wants it. Over Miller. It's got to be pure in this building. Otherwise, it is popping out. And long rebounds, particularly after a three ball taken, is going to be huge. And usually offensive rebounds can be the difference in this building. Nice defensive play once again by Garrett Temple just into the game playing with four fouls. Well, and I didn't think that was a good decision by Miller. It was a tough play, a tough pass to try to connect. Too many hands in the way. Tasman Mitchell trying to shake Harris. Hard to do. Ramon Harris has done a nice job in this half defensively. As has Galloway. Galloway checking Marcus Thornton off the ball. Spencer. There's the dribble drive you were talking about, Mike. Very effective. Right, they got a nice little brush screen from Warren up top to it. Let him get to his right hand. LSU by one. Just over two to play. Trying to secure an outright Southeastern Conference regular season championship. Meeks fouled by Warren. I believe he may have gotten him prior to the shot. We'll see. There's, a, there's that little screen, and then Patterson a little late coming out. Still a very tough finish by Spencer inside. We talked about it. He is a scoring point guard, up just under 12 points a game. Well, they did say he was in the act, so Meeks will get two. Look at that. Just under 90% for Jody Meeks. Three for four today. Yeah, he's had his miss for the month already. We've not seen any of Michael Porter in this half. Wildcat fans are on their feet. 64-63, Kentucky. Mitchell wide open. Inside the arc. Thornton the follow. Yes, and a foul. What a big-time play. Quiet in the crowd. You talk about the strength of Marcus Thornton <laughs> getting in between and Patterson right in the middle of that, too. The jump shot, look at the front of the rim, just wide open. I mean, that is a high wire rack. Well, and you know what? It's something that actually that Kentucky had cleaned up in this half. They haven't given many second chance opportunities, but that one really hurts. Thornton, 18 second half points. And Billy Gillespie gets a timeout, and he is giving his Wildcats the once over. Yet another putback, and that has been a problem for Kentucky. LSU leads it by two with 146 remaining 
partner, we've seen a lot of great games this year and in years past. This is right up there. Well, I, I just, the, the intensity of that second half has really been outstanding. And this young man has come alive, 3 of 14 in the first 20 minutes, but uh, not one to stop shooting at all. And he's gotten into the paint area a lot more in this half, put his head down, decided to drive the basketball. There's the lift on the three right there. But what a huge offensive rebound and putback he had on the last possession. Here we go. We'll see the stretch run here. Will they get the ball into Patterson's hands? They do. Even with the double team to no avail, Patterson, a man amongst boys. 90 seconds remaining. 28 on the day for Patrick Patterson. Bo Spencer for three. <laughs> Just big shot after big shot for both of these teams. And the shooting guard goes to the point, and the point guard makes the three. Right, but he's, you know, we know that he can score. Meeks for three. Thornton trying to corral it, and Spencer comes out of there with it. Under a minute left, the Tigers trying to secure an outright SEC regular season championship. Many people believe Kentucky's got to have this game. About 25 seconds, they just need a good stop. Thornton in traffic, and once again, he'll get to the line. Darius Miller picks up the foul. There's the look, and a beautiful find that time. Very unselfish for Thornton. I go back to those interchangeable parts, Mike. Yeah, it's been Spencer, 6 of 12, 4 of 7 from uh, downtown in this game. Well, LSU in the last couple of games has been outstanding at the free throw line. And he has been perfect today at the strike. 15 points, we jinxed him. 15 for Thornton in the last eight minutes and 50 seconds. We? <laughs> Galloway, he'll get to the strike. The foul will go against Spencer. Well, not that you want to put anybody at the line, but Galloway 47% coming into the this game. Galloway at the line for two. But today's Chevrolet players of the game. Marcus Thornton, what a second half performance for LSU and Patrick Patterson all game long. In recognition of continued excellence on and off the court, Chevrolet will make a contribution to each university scholarship fund to support the development of new technologies and innovations. Learn about Chevy innovations at Chevy.com. Kentucky in a must foul situation right now, Tim. Oh, they got the rebound, the offensive board by Patterson. New life. Miller for three. Your chicken strip sandwich, my junior deluxe burger, this everyday value menu is something. I mean, it's a good deal. Yeah, oh, I'm glad that you noticed these things. It's really important to notice the value of a dollar. So how much did that purse you just bought at the mall cost? has nothing to do with this current conversation that we're having. The new everyday value menu at Sonic. Got a buck? Then drive in for a variety of great food like a Junior Deluxe Burger or grab a chicken strip sandwich for just a dollar. Sonic's new everyday value menu. All this for a buck each. We're tied at 70 in a quick point, and it's a big one. Kentucky took the timeout after the main field goal. So LSU does still have one remaining timeout. As you look at our game reset, and both are in the bonus. LSU with a sh shot clock off can play for one and the win on the road. Key thing here, Timmy, what you got to do if you're LSU, make sure you get the last shot of the game. You've got overtime in your pocket. I like Marcus Thornton trying to get into the rim and make something happen. You think? I, he probably would agree with me. <laughs> well, we've seen Spencer make a big three. Tasman Mitchell's been the one Tiger that's been totally shut down in the second half. Thornton will bring it up. Chances are he may not give it up. They run Galloway at him. He gives it up to Tasman Mitchell. Yes! LSU by three. 9.7 left. And the Wildcats get the timeout. And A.J. Stewart is getting blistered by Billy Gillespie. Well, the fans wanted it. 
timeout after a nylon sold for the Bayou. LSU leads it by three. They have not won in Rupp Arena in 20 years. And that season, Eddie Sutton was mired in difficulty, and Dale Brown had an outstanding player by the name of Chris Jackson. Right, and you look at it now, Tim. This is what LSU has got to guard the three-point line. I wouldn't be surprised to see him take a foul here as Kentucky gets close. You want to make sure it's not in the shooting motion. But uh, I, I believe in that, uh, in that philosophy of play. Don't let them get a look at a bomb, especially Jody Meeks. There you see it from downtown, 43%. Miller will bring it up against Spencer. Spencer got a hand on it. Meeks will watch it. Did they get a whistle? No, I don't believe so. No, what's that? It didn't look like there was any contact. No. I was surprised they didn't foul in that situation. And because uh, Meeks got the ball up. I thought it was a good no call. Yep. Thornton's got it. LSU secures. An outright SEC championship, 73 to 70 over Kentucky. Tasman Mitchell with a tray with 9.7 remaining. Thornton led the Tiger attack in the second half. They've now won 13 in a row in the conference and are on a 10 game win streak overall. Tonight on CBS is Cold Case, followed by back to back episodes of 48 Hours Mystery. For Mike Jaminski, this is Tim Brando saying so long from Lexington, Kentucky. Today's game produced by Ken Mack, directed by Jim Cornell. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, exclusive home of the men's NCAA championship.